Hey, hi there. So this is Fernando Ribeiro and we are going to start a couple of video tutorials about slots and overlay creation. Uh, so what we, we see here is the Prefabrica uh, web page. So uh, I've met those guys back something like uh, last year GDC and we worked together on the integration of uh, and the process of uh, content creation pipeline. Uh, so back then I was uh, starting the, the, the development of Yuma and we worked together to find out the pipeline and how it would work. Um, so those guys uh, have a lot uh, of content and they've been creating content for uh, Second Life for a long time. They also provide content for Asset Store and uh, basically they, they provided me some assets that I will be able to include uh, on my tutorials uh, and that's thanks to the, those guys. So uh, thanks, thank you a lot uh, for Fabrica and so let's start. Uh, I'm going to use the content creation files that are available on the GitHub that I've explained on the previous video. So the first thing I would like to do, I'm going to open here both folders. Here we have the the asset I'm going to integrate. Uh, it's a, something like a mili military boot and uh, we have here the, the separated file, um, the, the file for the separated parts of the body. Uh, this is from the content pack I'm providing. So I'm just going to copy this one and uh, I will rename this one as boot as well, uh, Fabrica boot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work now on this uh, blend file. It's basically a copy of the separated mesh. So let me open Blender. Okay, so this is the latest version we have available and I'm going to open the file uh, from the prefabric boot. So this is basically the identical file you guys have. Let me just remove this one here. Again, uh, this is not a Blender video tutorial. I'm not going to teach you guys how to use Blender. There, there are many videos about uh, how to work with Blender itself. This is mainly to explain the pipeline, the process to create the content and integrate uh, this content uh, to Unity. Uh, there is also a, a video tutorial uh, for 3 Max users. I'm going to link this video tutorial uh, on the on this YouTube uh, channel the, here. So if you're a 3 Max user, you probably would like to watch this other video tutorial. So the first thing. Uh, why I'm using the separated uh, mesh instead of the the unified one that we have here? Well, if I'm going to integrate uh, content like a boot, I the first thing I need to consider is if I'm going to swap between the feet and the boot, or if I'm going to keep both of them. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm going to swap them. So let me just import here the OJ file. This is the one provided by the by Profabrica. And well, d depending on how it was exported, we are going to set those uh, import settings here. In my case, I'm quite sure uh, the settings. Uh, I've uh, set up this file were based on the ZBrush, so those are the axis changes, and I'm also keeping the vertex order. 
and that's what we have here. Uh, as you can see, the, the volume is not perfectly matching. I've also uh, slightly edited this so that you can uh, have this, this composition here. And usually, if you're working on your own files, uh, I would expect probably in some cases the origin of the the pivot of the game the the object the mesh itself being uh, some probably on the center of the mesh like this so the first thing we need to mention uh, is about the this information of the origin and rotation of the mesh so uh, if we press n we open here the this tab we can actually select these roots and take a look on the location and rotation of this and also of course the scale and the first thing I want to do and this is really important uh, before anything else um, and I need to be sure I'm going to press Ctrl A and apply uh, to location and rotation and of course scale if I did actually change it anything here. What this does is that it's going to keep uh, the pivot point on the zero in the location and I'm also going to have zero value on rotation. Uh, if you select any other mesh you will notice those values are the same. This is really important and uh, so this is really uh, something I should mention early on. And you can see here if I select the feet, uh, at extreme angles it's possible to see the feet, but I'm not really uh, going to worry uh, that much uh, on this specific tutorial. So uh, I'm going to simply swap between the feet and the, the boots, as you can see here. Okay, so now that we have corrected the pivot point for the boot mesh, as the values here are uh, now in the zero point, uh, what I'm going to do is to use the mirror uh, modifier. Uh, this order usually depends. I, I For this kind of facet, I, I usually like to uh, do the mirror before the, the skinny, but uh, in most cases uh, I would consider doing the skinning and then mirroring the the mesh itself, but uh, I will do this for the those boots. Uh, so we can have uh, uh, specific edges for each of them uh, if necessary. So I'm going to apply here. Now we have uh, both of them and I'm going to use the armature modifier. And for the male rig, uh, this is important uh, as we already uh, talked about this earlier. Uh, when creating the content we need to consider if the target is the male base mesh or the female base mesh. So in this case we are going to create this for the male one. Uh, so it's also possible to adjust this for the female. Uh, it, it needs to be a, a separated file. Uh, I mean a separated slot. So now that the armature is uh, set, uh, what I'm going to do now is to project the scanning values, uh, the scanning data from the feet to the boots. And this is something interesting. Uh, I'm not going to project from this uh, mesh here of the feet. I'm going to actually project from the unified mesh. That's because we have some extra vertices here from the leg that should also provide influence over the boots. So I'm going to select the boots and move to the layer that I know that also have the unified mesh as you can see here and I'm going also to have visible the layer with the rig itself 
and this is an uh, important step. I'm going to change to pose mode the ring. And if I select a bone and rotate, you can see that the base mesh is already receiving the influence, but of course the the boot itself isn't because we didn't provide any information for the scanning data yet. So uh, I'm going to save this and I'm going to select first the unified base mesh the entire base mesh at the middle of it. Then with shift press it, I select the boot and then I enter the weight paint mode. Uh, I could manually paint the, the, the weight for the boot, but I'm going to save time and uh, actually use the transfer weight. So I press here and you need to be sure all groups are selected and usually I use the nearest face algorithm for this. Then you can actually select parts and see the influence. So now if I rotate this guy, boot itself is also rotating on both sides of course. Again, as I baked the mirror modifier, I now can actually adjust the skinny for each of the, the boots. So in this case, it's not going to be necessary, uh, but it could be done this way. So if I scale the mesh, if I have edges on, edges on the volume of the body, now the, the boot itself is also adapting to those changes. As I've said uh, earlier, I'm not going to worry about the fit itself because I'm actually going to swap between the, the boots and the fit uh, mesh. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the mode to object mode of the, for the rig and I'm going to select both the rig and the, the mesh of the boots. I'm going to save again and I'm going to export as FBX file. So I already set up this for the for Unity, but let me show you. We have the adjust on the forward axis as you can see here. And I as there is no animation I usually don't include any information for optimizing keyframes and anything related to, to animation. <laughs> so I'll export this and it's done. Again, really important, we need to have both the armature and the, the mesh selected. All, uh, both of them need to be selected. Uh, this is uh, necessary to uh, have the rig information and the mesh and of course the scanning information that's also necessary. So we are reaching the time limit for this video and uh, I will keep recording and uh, upload as a separated video. So that's it for now guys. See ya. Goodbye.